On June 12th, during the Summer Games Festival, Xbox Game Studios premiered what looked like a teaser for Civilization 7, but it wasn't for Civ at all. What followed was a trailer by the studio Oxide Games showcasing a new 4X grand strategy game called Ara, History Untold. Pyramids in the Snow, Benjamin Franklin next to Stonehenge, a small cinematic trailer for a brand new strategy game unfolded out of the blue in front of our eyes. The question that I, as well as I'm sure a lot of you are asking, who? What? In this video, I'm going to break down a few things that we know about Ara History Untold and the studio behind the game. With Humankind having been released for a year now to mediocre reviews and scores, and the newly released Old World only a month old, there hasn't been too much competition to draw the focus away from the Civilization franchise itself, specifically Civilization VI. Humankind seems to be doing well enough, maybe not as well as some has hoped, but well enough to be its own standalone game in the series, with some new constant updates and future DLC releases that it seems to be starting to garner a little bit more recognition from the 4X gaming sphere. Old World was in alpha and beta stages for over a year now before the full Steam release that happened less than a whole month ago. Outside of that, people keep finding their way back to Civ with the constant new flurry of mods being released that make this six-year-old game still seem fresh. Insert Ara, History Untold. Ada, ada. Okay, I swear I, I promise I won't make any more Ada Ada jokes. I swear it. From what we can see, it looks like a typical 4X slash grand strategy game. You lead a civilization under the guise of a prominent leader, starting from the dawn of humankind to the future eras. Now, this game is obviously still in pre-alpha, and it was just announced, so the only thing we have to go off of are screenshots, the trailer of the game, and a newly released small video footage of a game's showcase. Before we break down the game, however, let's look into the studio that is creating this game. If you're like me, you might be going, who is Oxide Studios? Where did they come from? We'll both stop making Ada Ada jokes anytime the game is mentioned. Uh, no, I will not if you're wondering, but Oxide Studios was founded over nine years ago by former devs and Firaxis employees, aka the studio that is behind the Civilization series. These employees, Dan Baker, Mark Meyer, Brian Wade, and Tim Kipp were key in shaping one of my favorite games of all time, Civilization V. Before the completion and final DLCs of Civ VI, I was a wholehearted Civilization V purist with the thought and notion that the expansion of Civ V Brave New World was the best that Civ could get. This is obviously not including some of my favorite mods of that game that include Vox Populi. Why am I bringing up all of this information with all of these people who, if you are not familiar with the 4X series, people might just shrug it off and say, okay, cool, people who program games, Bose, thanks a lot. This is important at least for me, because the development and foundation of this game are in hands of devs that understand that good mechanics to the core gameplay are vital for a game in this genre to succeed. So what can we take from what we've been shown of Ara? Okay, that's the last one, I swear. I swear I will not do another one. As mentioned previously, this game is in pre-alpha and was only announced a week ago, so there really isn't too much to go off of. Going to their website, there is a media page that has a few screenshots that we can analyze, as well as some video footage from a recent showcase a couple of days ago that we can kind of pick over as well. Now first, let's go over the obvious things. This is a 4X game. It has resources. It has wonders. From the screenshots, let alone the trailer, we can see that you can build the typical wonders. Colosseum, pyramids, Chichen Itza. It looks like there might be a possible porcelain tower sighting, albeit that could just be a district. We also have the standard resources that you would find in a strategy game. Population, science, food, money in the form of gold, as well as what looks like stone and wood, which kind of remind me of games like Age of Empires or even Banished. Going through the rest of the icons, we have what seems like other core aspects of the game that you would expect. Government, legislation, faith, diplomacy. Before we jump into the possible core mechanics of this game, we're going to talk about the aesthetics and the obvious things that we can just see with our eyes. Now, especially coming from Civ, you'll notice that this game does not look like it uses a hex board or a square board for that matter, but something a little bit more similar to what the Endless series and Humankind uses. Segments that are broken up from your territory. Now, based off of this screenshot, it looks like it, the map uses procedurally generated segments based off of maybe where resources lie, 
features and it's up to you to claim them whether you claim them by buying them or your influence and culture grows to them or if you claim them with a unit such as like a settler that is unknown but i wouldn't be surprised if it's with one of those mechanics while i do love the idea of a game board being behind the premise of these games uh, and this is with my thousands of hours of Civ talking. Uh, one of the biggest breaths of fresh air with humankind was that you had this weird sectional segmented land that made up your empire. Uh, it makes the moves of the game a little bit more strategic. You have to be a little bit more careful about how you move. Um, it also ends up making the game look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Now, speaking of aesthetics, how many times am I going to say aesthetics in this video? Let's talk about that for about half a second. So, so far from what I've seen, this seems to be both a positive and a negative for me. Now, I'd love to hear your opinions on this, so please let me know in the comments below because it's honestly the most obvious thing and really all we have to go off of at this time. Now, remember, this is pre-alpha, so I'm sure a lot of this will change by the time even the technical alpha is released. Uh, but let's talk about the positives first. The game does look very pretty. The, the tilt-shift screenshots make for some very pretty art. And honestly, it kind of reminds me of playing City Skylines for a second just because of the city building aspect it has. The drawn out roads and connected pathways between the, the cities do a great job of connecting your empire and make it seem like this it's this one big breathing sprawling city as opposed to just your city being on one tile such as Civ. Now, I absolutely love this, and it's something that I've mentioned multiple times on streams and in my videos that I would love to see in Civ 7, that the districts in the city connected make it look more like a city builder but it still plays as a 4x game now i have been very vocal about my disappointments with humankind but this is one thing that humankind does very very well there are drawbacks to it but i will get into those in a second in the screenshots here you can see the differences in time there are big massive skyscrapers and large city centers huge sprawling empires in the atomic era but once you go back to the Iron Age, you'll see that there are small buildings made out of stone and small gatherings showing the differences between the ages. Now, another big positive for me is that the UI for this game does seem to be very, very well thought out. Humankind did a great job in this, making the UI minimalist enough that it doesn't clutter the screen, which is something that Civ does tend to ignore. These are usually made better by community mods, but vanilla Civ usually has a pretty god-awful UI. I mean, imagine playing Civilization V today without the enhanced UI mod. <laughs> I, I know that I could not do it. The UI from what we see in these screenshots is big enough to read and show you the immediate information that you need, but the transparency allows the background to still show through and not be the central point of focus of the game, which is something that I think Forex games have needed for a while, especially if you're trying to appeal to a larger audience. There are some other UI things that I'm not sure what they're there for yet. In this screenshot, it looks like you can hover over something that is being built or has been built and see the type of resource that either it's taking or a resource that it's providing. Maybe it's a resource that you need to build that. Obviously, we're not sure. That's just a pre-alpha. But it does look like you can lock this icon on the screen to permanently show as indicated by this little lock. Kind of similar to how you could show the yields on the map in previous games. Based off of this screenshot, it also looks like that you could show what is currently being created in this building district. But like I said, we'll go over those mechanics later. Now we can talk about the negatives, and while this game does look very pretty, and as I said, remember, it is in pre-alpha, so there are a lot of things that could change, it seems to, at least for me personally, suffer from the same homogenous sameness that Humankind does. Humankind has a great art style, and it leans really hard into that art style, but for me personally, it's almost to a fault. It does become hard to differentiate between cultures, between leaders, even between cities on the map. Now this is the point of humankind. Cultures start blending and combining throughout the game, and this unvarying art style is kind of expected near the end stages of the game. Aura, based off of the screenshot, looks like it's kind of taking the same route. Now, understanding that it is very hard to create unique looking cities, let alone a bunch of them, I do get that you're gonna have a varying degree of sameness in the map, especially when it comes to procedurally generated maps. I think the critique in this for me is that when everything starts to look a bit the same, everything becomes quite muddled, and it actually affects the gameplay a little bit more than you think. This happens a lot with me for Humankind. I do like Humankind, but everything, when everything starts to look the same, it removes the uniqueness to things that you are building, which removes the importance to what you need to build and create on the map. Civilization VI does this, I think, perfectly in the district system. Probably one of the biggest shining lights in the Civ game itself. 
When you see a holy site district in Civilization VI, you know that it's going to generate you faith and it's going to be useful for religion or faith stuff. When you see a campus in the game, you know that, that it's specifically going to be for science and it's going to give you science things. There was a lot of criticism in the art style for Civilization VI when it was announced, with it being called too cartoony with too much color, which honestly, it makes a lot of sense if you look at Civilization V's art style, but there was also another game that used to be called too cartoony with too much color and too cell shaded that ended up being one of the fan favorites of the game years down the line. But I would argue that this is actually Civilization VI's biggest strength, and I'm not talking specifically about art itself. I'm not talking only about the colors that they chose or the way that their map looks. I'm talking about how buildings are designed, how each Civ's music and theme allows you to easily identify who is in the game, to even how the leaders react with their over-the-top animated style, the ways that they greet you, the ways that they the ways that they move when they denounce you. Seeing easily distinguishable features and reactions cause you, as the player, to identify and know what is happening in your brain without having to talk it out, without, without having to spell it out, which I think a lot of 4X and Grand Strategy games fail at, especially when trying to draw newer players who are not familiar with this genre. Now, I don't want you to overthink and think that I'm trying to say the game is a failure because of this, because this is literally just pre-alpha screenshots. As I stated previously, when Civ 6 was announced, the screenshots they provided were drastically different than the release. Additionally, even the UI has been changed multiple times from vanilla to now the New Frontier Pass. The art style and the way that the game looks is not the end all, be all to a game. I mean, look at games like RimWorld, which are not the most aesthetically pleasing of games, but has such incredible depth in gameplay that it constantly brings in new players because of it. One more negative for me, which I know a lot of people actually like, this is just a personal gripe of mine, but it is the lack of an immediate minimap. From the screenshots, it looks like they're going with the grand strategy style, endless legends way of view viewing the game map by zooming out to reveal the game board. Now, I get the reasoning behind this. It's less screen clutter. It provides a cleaner UI, but it's probably just the StarCraft in me that cannot get behind not having a minimap on the UI. Now, it's a stylistic choice, but it's just one small thing for me. Overall, even with these negative aspects aside, I do appreciate that the direction that they are trying to take with the game. Now, please let me know in the comments how you feel about it. I would love to know. Obviously, it's literally just art. The gameplay could be so incredible that it just completely takes aside from that. But that's really all we have to go off of at this time. Now, there's not too much to speak of when it comes to the mechanics of the game, since this is a 4X and strategy game and it is being developed by people who have worked on Civ games before, it is safe to assume that it's going to play very similar to Civilization itself. You research things with science, you build things with production, you buy things with currency, so on and so forth. You build wonders that will impact the development of your gameplay, whether it be extra resources, influence, happiness, so on and so forth. There are militaristic aspects of this game. As you can see in the screenshot, there are armies, and based off of the screenshot, it appears that this player is at war with someone. There are enemies shown here in the red circle with a little X at the bottom, and your armies have white borders. There are some units on the map with gray borders, albeit that could just be where they are. It shows us off-white because they're close to the fog of war, but, but who knows. You can see a city under siege here, and while it is under siege, there are no units shown on the map. So what I'm wondering is if that there's kind of a separate combat system outside of the game board, similar to how humankind does. If that is so, then that honestly makes me very excited about this game because that is my favorite aspect of Humankind and in 4X games in general. I love tactic-based games. Final Fantasy Tactics and Tactics Ogre are some of my favorite games of all time, and it's why I love Domination Victories in Civilization VI so much. You can see some cities revolting here, whether that's from unhappiness, warriorness, or maybe just because they were captured. Who knows? It, we'll have to wait and see. Districts, or at least placement of infrastructure, does seem to be making its way into this game as well. Now, I'm a big fan of city builders. I love city skylines. I love Anno 1800. I love games like Banished. So this type of playstyle being built into a 4X game, it's not necessarily new, but it's something that I've talked about forever and would love to see in future series. The district minigame in Civilization VI is one of my favorite parts of the game. Trying to figure out the puzzle to give you the most optimal yields to make you win this game is something that I love to plan out and I attempt to succeed in. There is a possibility that it's just how the cities look and evolve, 
But from what I can see here, some of those specific buildings on the map are for specific things, such as this stable here looking like it is the building where you produce maybe cavalry or maybe you are harvesting horses. There is a little bar, a little indicator showing the time lapse of that, so uh, that is a possibility there. The biggest mechanic that I want to talk about, however, is what looks like to be the victory condition of the game. Now, if you have not noticed, on the top left there is a little icon showing first your civilization's emblem, and around that emblem looks like an olive leaf crown that can be filled up. Now, next to this emblem is a number, and based off of everything here, it looks like it is some sort of score indicator. Now, whether or not this is going to go the same route as humankind, and you win based off of your score, similar to their fame system, who knows. Uh, if, if so, I'm not sure how I feel about that. It's probably one of my least favorite things about humankind. It, humankind did eventually allow you and gave you some systems to trigger the end game to win the score victory. So that way you can focus on something instead of just going bigger number, better person. Uh, but another possible thing is that it could be a score system for something similar to maybe what Golden Ages are, like in the Civ series. You reach a specific number of modifiers or number, and your empire goes into a Golden Age for a period of time. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because on this screenshot, the bar is about one quarter of the way full, but in the next screenshot, the bar is empty, but the numbers next to it are golden. Now, the reason why I'm leaning more towards a score type victory is because of the specific comments from the developers themselves. As quoted here from their website, they say, Infinite replayability arises from each game's procedurally generated environment, so no two games will ever be the same. We have a feature of infinite possibilities by researching diverse technologies, each one unlocking new kinds of resources, improvements, goods, and equipments. Now, from the surface level, it does seem that they are kind of only talking about just like the map and how the map interacts with the way that you're going to be playing, but when they say things like infinite possibilities, that gives me a reminder of when Humankind was being announced and they kept talking about how you had endless possibilities. And here's another quote here from their most recent developer showcase on the 14th, which kind of solidifies this for me. So one of the kind of big things we wanted to do with Aura was really explore how to make the game less about finding that optimal strategy, that optimal path, and really bring in ways to make it more meaningful to the player, make it unique to themselves. So what are different kinds of choices we can bring to the player so that when you play, it's different than when I play, and yet we can both be competitive together? Um, how can we do things to really impact agency and expression and really let you express your values and your play styles through the different mechanics in the product? Now, this is a little bit of a negative for me because if you know me, I try to find the most optimal path in the game and I kind of speed run it as best as possible. The majority of my videos in Civilization VI are how can I win this game in under 200 turns by doing XYZ strategy and still being funny. I cut corners and I like to be hyper greedy. Now that's literally just my personal play style. I know that there is a ton of viewers and a ton of players who just play the game semi-casually try to have as much fun with it. And there's nothing wrong with that. This is just my own personal opinion. We can speculate, obviously, but please let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Now, one of the best things about Civilization and its franchise is the leaders. Ah, see. The majority of the leaders are known historical figures or mythical figures, which causes you to connect to that Civ that you're playing as. George Washington of America, Alexander the Great, Gilgamesh, and it does seem like we are going the same route in this game as well. For this, as you can see in this quote, Nefertiti seems to be leading the Egyptians, Washington again as the US, the Greeks who, with someone I was not expecting to be a leader, Sappho. One thing that is mentioned here, just like with humankind, is that you can create a custom leader to play in this game. Now, I think this is a fantastic idea. Crusader Kings does this, humankind does this, and I would not be surprised if we see custom leaders based off of content creators, just like Humankind did with Spiffing Brit, with Quill, Marbs, Potato, etc., and have the ability to claim those leaders via drops on Twitch in order to promote the game later. Obviously, you'll be able to create your own, and my hope is that on top of just the stylistic choices of how you make your leader look, you'll be able to choose attributes that shape your game just like Humankind does. Now, whether your strengths are being a warmonger, or maybe you get some extra science, or maybe extra diplomacy for being a smooth talker. Who knows, but I am hoping that these added aspects find their way into the leader creator. 
All in all, there is a lot to unpack here in this seemingly small announcement of another 4X strategy game. We don't have a ton of information, but what we can get from the screenshots and from the announcements seems to be that we have another great game on our way. I do have a lot of faith in this studio, as there is a lot of history there from the founders and a lot of bright minds working towards a new game. They seem to be very excited about what they're pushing forward in the 4X genre, and only time will tell with what they create out of it. Now I for one am just really really glad that we're getting another 4X game added to our library. My only concern is that with this 2022 announcement and the technical alpha only being at the end of the summer, is Aura going to be possibly overshadowed and it's what I, I'm only imagining being a late 2023 release by an actual new Civ game announcement. That, I mean, obviously only time will tell, but from the way that Civ does their games, they usually announce a new game every six to seven years. It does seem likely that at the end of this year, maybe in the beginning or mid to next year, Civilization and Firaxis is going to announce a brand new Civ game. So we'll have to see. If you haven't signed up yet, you can attempt to get into the technical alpha of this release. That is supposed to be happening later in the summer by going off of their website. Um, you can find the website down below in the description. This isn't an ad or anything. I'm not being paid to say this. I'm just putting the description down there for uh, everyone's sake. Now, please let me know in the comments down below what you think about the previews that we've gotten for Ara History Untold. Uh, are you excited that a new Civ-like game is coming to fruition? Is the trailer or information that we've been shown about the game underwhelming? Do you even like the name of the game? Please, I would like to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments. And if you did like this video or want to stay in the know about Ara and Ara news in the future, please consider subscribing to the channel. I create informational and gameplay videos about Civilization VI, and I do plan on expanding outside of that with videos like this one. Now, I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye!